good morning here the topic is uh, past tense no you know that uh, this topic appears in the subject of fluid mechanics and this is a chapter on hydrostatics and the law is what law is uh, pressure at a point in a fluid at rest is same in all directions so this is the statement of the pascal's law and uh, you have studied in your earlier classes class 7 or 8 uh, the experimental verification or the experimental proof of the same law here you are going to study the same thing theoretically means you are going to study theoretical proof of pascal's law by using two dimensional fluid element this law can be proved again by using three dimensional fluid element this law can be proved but uh, using three dimensional fluid element the proof is somewhat difficult i think if you study first the proof of the same law using two dimensional fluid element then it will be easier or it will be better for you uh, to understand the next one that is using three dimensional fluid element okay so this is what this is theoretical proof so uh, we are using here cartesian coordinate system another coordinate system can also be used for the proof but it is easy if you take cartesian coordinate system for the same proof so okay uh, here uh, we are taking x this is the x axis as the horizontal axis and y axis as the vertical axis and o is the origin okay x is the horizontal axis okay and now take an uh, arbitrary line which intersects both the x axis and the y axis at some points so that line is this one denoted by ab the point of intersection is here a here point of intersection is b and here the fluid element is very small in size so dimensions of the fluid element should also be very small okay so this dimension the length oa is denoted by delta x and this length ob this is denoted by delta y okay and in two dimension fluid cannot exist so there should be some thickness suppose in the direction perpendicular to the direction of the boat okay there is unit thickness unit thickness means one if the dimensions are in, in are in millimeter then this thickness will be 1 mm if the dimensions are in meter the thickness should be the thickness should be 1 meter like that so thickness is unity now uh, since the fluid element is very small in size so we can easily assume that within that small element within that small fluid element the density remains constant it, it does not vary okay say the density of the fluid element is rho rho is the density this is rho this is the density of the fluid element then what is the volume of the fluid element volume of the fluid element volume of the fluid element this is the volume of the fluid element this is how much this is equal to area of the triangle multiplied by the thickness okay so area of the triangle is how much half into this delta x into delta y multiplied by 1 1 is the thickness perpendicular to the direction of the boat okay so this is the volume of the fluid element half into delta x into delta y into 1 therefore what is the mass of the fluid element mass of the fluid element mass of the fluid element this is equal to what this volume multiplied by the density therefore it is equal to half into rho into delta x into delta y into this one okay this one so this is the mass of the fluid element now consider that here on all the edges three edges are there oa ab and ob since the thickness is unity okay therefore on on all the edges there are rectangular surfaces 
And suppose on this rectangular surface, which is uh, on, uh, which lies uh, on the edge OB, okay. Suppose in this case the pressure in this direction, which is the direction of x, it is denoted by P suffix x. X is the direction, okay. Because this pressure is parallel to the direction of x, so it has been taken to be P suffix x. Similarly, here this pressure is denoted by Py because it is in the direction of y. So this and there is one more edge AB and the direction of which is not known actually because the dimensions delta x and delta y are arbitrary. Therefore, AB may have any inclination with the negative direction of x and suppose that angle is theta and here pressure always acts normal to the adjacent surface therefore this is taken to be normal to the edge AB and it is denoted by P suffix N N for normal ok means perpendicular to the, uh, to the surface AB ok so this is PN now so due to PN there are only force on the surface AB which, is, which will be equal to this PN multiplied by the area that will be the force and due to that force, uh, due to the presence of that force, we can resolve that force into two components, one along the direction of x, another along the direction of y. So here you draw this vertically downward direction and you draw this horizontal direction. Means here the force is resolved into two components. Okay. So uh, if you extend this line, line of action of PN, if you extend this, so you can see that for this uh, quadrilateral, this angle is what? 90 degree. This angle is also 90 degree since it is perpendicular and this is theta. Therefore, this is what? This is 90 degree minus theta because total angle is 360 degree. This is 90, this is 90, this is theta. So, this must be 90 degree minus theta. So, this must be what? This must be, this is 90 degree minus theta. So this must be what? Okay, this will be 180 degree minus 90 degree minus theta. 180 degree minus 90 degree minus theta. 180 degree minus 90 degree minus theta. Right? This angle is 90 degree minus theta. Is there any doubt? No, there should be no doubt. This is 90, this is 90, 180. Okay. So this plus this should be 180. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, I committed one mistake. Since this is theta, this should not be 90 degree minus theta. This should be 180 degree minus theta. Right? Not 90 degree minus theta. This should be 180 degree minus theta. Since this plus this, uh, this should be 180 degree. So this is 180 degree minus theta. Therefore, this must be theta. And this is theta, and uh, this line and this line are parallel, and this is the line of intersection. That means this angle should be theta. Okay. So here the component, the vertically downward direction. Here the component should be force multiplied by cos theta, and here the component should be force multiplied by sine theta. Now, since the fluid element is at rest condition, okay. Since the fluid element is at rest condition, then resultant force acting on the fluid element must be zero and if you re resolve the resultant force into two components one along x one along y another along y then we know from the knowledge of mechanics or engineering mechanics that sigma fx must be zero again sigma fy must be zero right these are known to you okay sigma fx means algebraic summation of the forces along the direction of x that should be zero and separately algebraic summation of the forces along y direction must be zero and that is denoted by sigma x y equals, equals to zero so these conditions are known to you now we are talking about the direction of x so in the direction of x here pressure is px area is how much delta y this length delta y ob into one so sigma fx i am writing here sigma fx this is equal to Px multiplied by delta y multiplied by 1. 
Okay, this is in this direction. There will be no contribution of the force due to this pressure P Y because they are perpendicular to each other. But and again, there will be no contribution of the weight of the fluid element along the direction of X because in that case, weight of the fluid element and the direction of X they are perpendicular to each other. But there will be a contribution of the force due to the presence of this pressure P N. Okay, so for P N, what is the force? Force is equal to P N multiplied by this area. Here the length is A B. This is the hypotenuse of this triangle. Therefore, length A B is equal to what? Length A B is equal to root over of delta x square plus delta y square. This is the length A B. Okay. And multiplied by the thickness 1 is equal to area. Okay. Multiplied by P n is equal to force. Okay. And which component we should take? We should take the horizontal component. That means this one. Since this angle is theta, so here the component should be force multiplied by sine theta. So this is the force multiplied by what? Sine theta. Right? Sine theta. And it is acting in the negative direction of x. So with a negative sign, we need to write this force. So this is the algebraic summation of the forces in the direction of x. And this should be equal to 0. Okay. Now, from the given figure, sin theta, this is equal to how much? This is equal to this distance delta y divided by this. Okay. So, put that one. So, I am writing here. So, in the next line, in the next line, px into delta y, okay, px into delta y minus pn into this length delta x square plus delta y square and sin theta is equal to delta y divided by the hypotenuse which is equal to delta x square plus delta y square and which is equal to 0 okay which is equal to 0 since sigma fx must be 0 so this and these are cancelled here delta y is present here delta y is present so you divide both sides by delta y and this division is possible because delta y is Delta y is very small, but it is not exactly 0. So, division is possible. So, you divide both sides of this by delta y and the result is what? Result is equal to, after division you will get the result, this. Px is equal to Pn. So, we have got this result. When we have got this result? By considering the uh, condition sigma fx, sigma fx is equal to 0. Now, uh, you use the another, let me check whether everything is visible or not. Yeah, everything is visible. Now, we are considering the direction of y. So, we have got this one. So, only that part is required and nothing else is required here. So, I am erasing this part. Okay. Erasing this part. This part is not required. So, now considering the condition what can we are considering the condition sigma fy sorry this is sigma fy sigma fy is equal to zero okay we are using the condition sigma fy is equal to zero okay some water is there on the board that's why the whatever i am writing is not clearly visible okay Sigma Fy is equal to 0. Okay, this is the condition we are going to use here. Sigma Fy is equal to 0. So, means we are considering the vertical direction, the direction of Y. So, in the, uh, so in the next line, we should write what? Py, this is the vertical upward direction. So, force should be what? Py multiplied by the concerned area. That means delta x. This length delta x multiplied by 1. Right. So, this is the area, uh, this is the force in the upward direction and in the downward direction contribution of this force should be there. Okay. It is downward. So, with a negative sign, I should write again it, it is equal to what? Pn into root over of delta x square 
plus delta y square into 1 multiplied by cos theta. Okay. Since this angle is theta, so it is cos theta with a negative sign. It is in the negative direction of y. Okay. And weight of the fluid element. Weight of the fluid element. Mass of the fluid element was this much. So weight of the fluid element should be this multiplied by g, small g, where g is accelerated due to gravity. And with a negative sign. So minus half half rho delta x delta y. This one multiplied by g. Okay. And this would be equal to 0. Okay. Now you put here cos theta. This is equal to delta x divided by this length. Okay. So again I need to erase some portion. Uh, some part. Okay. Now these are not required. These are not required. Uh, so the in the next line we can write what we can write py into what delta x is there py into delta x minus pn root over of this delta x square plus delta y square the same thing and cos theta is equal to what it is equal to delta x divided by the hypotenuse delta x square plus delta y square okay and this is also there minus half rho delta x minus minus half rho g delta x delta y and this is equal to 0 since sigma y is equal to 0 okay now you divide both sides of the equation by delta x so what we are getting py this this hypotenuse and this hypotenuse are cancelled so py minus pn and here after dividing by delta x what we are getting half rho g into delta y this is delta half rho g delta y now you can see that py is py is finite pn is also finite rho and g this is also finite and delta y this is very very small okay Delta y is very very small, so this small quantity multiplied by a finite quantity will give you approximately a zero value. Okay, that can be easily neglected. This part can be easily neglected since delta y is actually vanishingly small. So, since this is neglected, this is zero. So from here, what is the result? The result is py is equal to pn. This result we have got here. Py is equal to pn, and here. We have got Px is equal to Pn. So what is the ultimate result? Ultimate result is Px is equal to Py is equal to Pn. Okay. So we have got this result. Px is equal to Py is equal to Pn. When we have got this result? When delta x and delta y both are vanishingly small quantity. And whenever delta x and delta y are vanishingly small quantity. That means this triangle actually shrinks to a point. Okay, this triangle, triangular area OAB, this shrinks to a point when delta x and delta y both are vanishingly small. So, when this fluid element shrinks to a point, we see the result this. Px is equal to Py is equal to Pn. And the choice of x and y axis, that, that was our choice. x and axis, x axis and y axis, those were our choice. But n was not our choice. This one. That was not our choice because that, that depends upon the values of delta x and delta, uh, delta y. Okay. That means theta may have any value. So we can see what is the result. We can see that since it has any value. Means theta has actually any value. Not pn has any value. Theta has any value. It depends upon the dimensions delta x and delta y. Okay. That means for all the directions. Theta gives the direction. Okay, so for all the directions, pressure is same because all these things, all these three things are pressure. Px, Py, Pn. All these three things are pressure. That means if you take any point, so this pressure, <coughs> this pressure, this pressure, this pressure, this pressure, all the pressures are same. 
Okay, all these measures can be distinguished by using different values of theta. Okay, and we have seen that Pn is Pn may have any value. Okay, it may have any value. That means pressure at a point in a fluid at rest is same in all directions. Okay, so this was the statement of the Pascal's law, and that can be uh, that could be proved here theoretically by using two-dimensional fluid element. The same thing can be proved using three-dimensional fluid element. Later, I'll post such video. Okay. So, this is the end of this lecture. Thank you for watching this video. Have a beautiful day.